So now let's talk about how a medical doctor can make a diagnosis of ulcerative colitis. So first thing that happens is uh, your doctor takes your medical history and does some blood work. Then there's a colonoscopy, which again is just a, a tube that's inserted kind of into the gastrointestinal tract, into the colon, and there's a camera on it, and we can look uh, at the inside of the colon and uh, assess the level of inflammation. And finally, uh, a pathologist can do histology on the colon tissue. So let's introduce histology. So how this works is a biopsy is taken from the colon, and that's just a small piece of colon tissue, and that tissue is cut up into smaller pieces and put on a slide and then examined under a microscope to look at uh, cellular and tissue features from that piece of the colon. So uh, pathologists have many tools in sort of their toolkit for studying uh, tissue. And one of the most common tools they use is this stain called H&E. This stands for hematoxylin and eosin. And these are two stains that when mixed together can provide contrast to a tissue uh, a section. So here we're looking at a t uh, colon tissue biopsy and it's been stained with this hematoxylin and eosin stain. And the hematoxylin, hematoxylin stains the cell nucleus uh, this blue purple color and the eosin stains every other part of the cell pink. So here you can see individual nuclei and then everything else is pink. And what this does is it gives you this really nice view of the tissue. So here we're looking at colonic crypts, which are intestinal glands made up of epithelial cells that line your entire colon. And this is a really common structure that we see all over the colon and it's really important for the colon function. Now, the colon itself has a somewhat complicated organization, so let's walk through it. So here's the colon tube and it's made up of multiple layers. And these layers are the mucosa, the submucosa, and the muscularis propria. So the mucosa is the innermost layer, and this is where uh, food or partially digested food gets pushed down the track, and there are colonic crypts that line the mucosa. Then below the mucosa is the submucosa, and this is a dense and sort of irregular kind of connective tissue. And then finally, uh, there's the muscularis propria, which is a thick layer of muscle, which is involved in peristalsis, which is pushing uh, food down the gut tube. So now, if we cut a cross section through the colon and then have a pathologist do an H&E stain of that colon tissue uh, piece, we get this nice cross section. And now, here is the inside of the colon where food and microbes are kind of living, and then here's the outside of the colon. And the H&E stain reveals the three layers. So here we have the mucosa, which is made up of these crypts, which are these circles you see all along the surface. And then below that is the submucosa. And then you see the muscle layer. And what you can see is that the H&E stain really reveals the structure and organization of the tissue. So now let's go from the outside in with the colon, starting with the muscle layer. So here's a zoom in of H&E of colon muscle. And there's two layers, this longitudinal layer and the circular layer. And again, this is important for pushing food through the gut. And then in between the layers, there's this nerve fiber or myenteric plexus. And this does a lot of things in the colon, but one of the things it's doing is kind of controlling, again, that peristalsis, the movement of food through the gut. Now let's go one layer in into the submucosa. The submucosa is this dense and irregular connective tissue that has fat cells, blood vessels, immune cells, and nerves. Here is a blood vessel highlighted, and you can see it's very red. There are red blood cells in there. Uh, here's a nerve cell that's been highlighted. And then finally, let's go to the innermost layer, which is the mucosa. And the mucosa has a somewhat complicated structure. The first layer of the mucosa is the epithelial layer. And that's made up of these glands here, or the colonic crypts, and they're shown here and here. And this is a really fascinating layer. Um, at the base of every single colonic crypt, there are stem cells. And these are regenerating the entire lining of the colon every five to seven days. So the colon is one of the fastest regenerating tissues in the body. And that's needed because as food goes down the colon, it's basically sloughing off a lot of the cells in this epithelial layer. So this layer needs to be regenerated constantly. Below the epithelium in these colonic crypts, there's the lamina propria, which consists of many immune cells and connective tissue. 
And then finally, there's a layer of muscle called the muscularis mucosa, which separates the mucosa from the submucosa. And this is important for local motions of the colonic crypts here. So in ulcerative colitis, there are dramatic changes to the normal uh, colon histology we see. So in this cartoon on the left, we have healthy colon. And on the right, we have ulcerative colitis. And there are sort of three big changes that happen histologically. One is crypt distortion. So we go from these normal looking colonic crypts to distorted ones or crypts that have these abscesses. Um, there's also epithelial changes that happen, uh, such as metaplasia. So metaplasia is the appearance of a new cell type that's not normally found in that tissue. And then finally, we also have immune infiltration. So immune infiltration means that immune cells are showing up, and this is because you know, ulcerative colitis is a disease with chronic inflammation, and these immune cells are showing up and causing inflammation in the mucosal layer. And so this could be neutrophils, which we talked about earlier, which are kind of responding to the bacteria in the colon, uh, also other cells such as plasma cells, which is a type of B cell. Okay, so here we're looking at a histology image of ulcerative colitis, and on the right, for comparison, we see healthy colonic crypts. So there are several tissue features that a pathologist can immediately spot when looking at this h &E stain of ulcerative colitis. Uh, first, they might say that, okay, there's these crypt abscesses, where if you look at the crypt, it looks like there's some cells in the center of the crypt, and those are neutrophils, which are these immune cells that are responding to bacteria that's infiltrated into the mucosa. Uh, the pathologist will also spot that there's ulceration, so the formation of these ulcers in the mucosa, and this is where ulcerative colitis gets its name. And then finally, a uh, pathologist would point out that there's basal plasma cytosis. So what this is, is the accumulation of plasma cells, which are a type of immune cell, and they are in the base of the mucosa. And they are these small blue cells that have been stained by the H&E, and they have very prominent blue nuclei. As another example, here we're looking at crypts that have undergone distortion and branching. So you see this sort of branching structure, and again, you compare this to the healthy colon, you just see these dramatic changes. We also see things like panath cell metaplasia. So a panath cell is a cell type that lives near your intestinal stem cells, and it protects the stem cell against microbes. And normally, these cells are not found in the distal colon, but during ulcerative colitis, you get this metaplasia where the cell type appears. And you can see this, if you look very closely, in this bright pink color, that's a telltale sign that there's a panda cell there.